Drive along any highway, go to any parking lot, and what are you going to see? Thousands of solid color, boring vehicles. We're at the front end of a revolution, a vehicle wrap revolution. Beautiful. That's pretty wild. Hey everybody, I'm Joe Elmore here with Frank Fellers. And hey, I gotta ask you a question, Frank. What's new in the world of vehicle wraps? Well, this truck is a perfect example of what's happening. It's just the future of the business. The vehicle wrap business is just absolutely exploding. Why is that? Because you can wrap so many things with vinyl. You can wrap your truck that you drive every day, like this one. You can wrap your race car. You can wrap your bus, motorcycles. As a matter of fact, a lot of businesses are starting to wrap their vehicles to promote their business or advertise. Check these numbers out. While a vehicle wrap costs just over a dollar per thousand impressions, primetime television costs over 18 bucks. Wow. Vehicle wraps and vehicle advertising gives you the best bang for your advertising dollar, period pretty convincing. Meanwhile, tell me about your truck here. Did you do this yourself? I sure did. Um, a camo wrap truck like this is, is great for a first timer like me because it really hides a bunch of mistakes. And boy, did I make a bunch of mistakes. Oh yeah, like what? Well, for example, these bubbles right here, we're going to show you how to prevent these type of problems. Okay, what else? Well, there's a, a seam. Can you see this where it's flapping up? Yeah. We're going to show you how to prevent that. And? Uh huh. Can you see those wrinkles? Well, yeah, I see them pretty good. <laughs> well, there's quite a few wrinkles throughout this truck, and we're going to show you how to prevent this type of problem. Okay, looking forward to that. But hey, in the meantime, pretty good first effort. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm proud of it. And if a first timer like me can do this, you can do it too. This video will help you attack the new and growing market of vehicle wraps. It'll guide you through many of the steps necessary to become a vehicle wrap expert. Of course, nothing takes the place of lots of practice, but this video should get you off to a great start. We'll touch on all the details from estimating the job to design, cleaning and prepping the vehicle, choosing the right material, installation and more. You'll learn from the pros and in a short time, you'll be ready to tackle your own vehicle wrap. Right now, I want you to meet Troy Downey from Ape Wraps. Troy and his team will guide you through the wrap of a new Porsche Cayman. Now, Ape Wraps has many years experience in the design and wraps of all kinds of vehicles, and well, they know the ins and outs firsthand. Troy, before we flash back to the wrap of this Porsche, tell me something about your company. Well, Joe, we've been involved in the custom car world for many years, primarily in the design and building of show cars and icon vehicles for the aftermarket automotive industry. Until about 2001, all vehicles in our world donned custom paint. But the custom paint world has changed. Primarily it's due to the print industry's ability to generate high resolution, photo quality images on a media that's designed to conform to a vehicle's compound curves. We can now simulate or even exceed what paint can do and in a fraction of the time. Not only are vehicle wraps cost effective compared to other forms of advertising, but they could enable you to advertise in areas that legally may not be available. For example, many cities have sign ordinances against signage out in front of your business. But there's no regulation on parking a wrapped car or van. So a vehicle wrap would provide you with the opportunity to gain exposure where normally you would not. If that's not enough, check this out. Did you know that the average vehicle driven the average miles per year passes nine million other vehicles? This really gives you a lot of bang for your buck. Vehicle wraps are unique and they have a wow factor that other forms of advertising have lost over time. Well, I gotta admit, I don't know a thing about wraps. Where do we start? As in any business, it's important to determine what our costs are and how do we make a profit. A lot of people make the mistake of not pricing in the design work on the job. Ultimately, the design is the first step in a successful wrap. The balance of a design can make or break your project. For example, let's have a look at some of these before and after shots. As you can see, the design makes all the difference, from mild to wild and everywhere in between. However, sometimes the graphic needs to be straightforward, like this company truck. Here, less is more. The design should do four things. First, it should get your point across clearly and concisely. 
Second, it should match the vehicle flow. Third, it should match your customer's budget, of course. Fourth, it should match your customer's expectations. Now, based on experience, you need to make dead sure you understand what your client's wishes are and expectations are. Be careful here as perception of beauty is in the eye of the beholder and what may be spot on to you may be far from what your client expected. If your customer has a limited budget, you can still work within their budget and get them an effective wrap. Sometimes a partial wrap can go a long way towards satisfying your customer's needs. Okay, when you design a wrap for a customer, what elements do you pay attention to in the design? Before you begin, you need to qualify your customer in order to determine the message they want to communicate. For example, if the proposed clientele or demographics is the Gen Xers, then you might want to make racier graphics. Whereas if you are promoting products for the elderly, then you'll want the graphics to have a different concept and attitude. So design is a very important aspect of the job. Design is the most critical aspect of any of these jobs. Design can make or break a project. Let's take a look at some of the jobs we've done today. A design needs to flow and be simplified to get the point across and at the same time provide balance and impact to all potential customers. Troy, those look great, but they must be expensive. What's the typical cost of a wrap? You know, Joe, there's no typical cost for a wrap. However, a partial wrap could run a grand, a full show wrap could run 10 grand. The average cost for a vehicle wrap is probably between $3,500 and $5,500. All right, what about the Porsche? Okay, the Porsche, for instance, that's about $2,300 cost, 4,500 retail, so there's probably $2,200 profit in the project. So the concept for the Porsche took a, approximately five hours to develop. Now, the total design time for the Porsche was 20 hours. On the other hand, though, an Econoline van may only take you five hours to design, while maybe a Ferrari could take longer. When factoring installation costs, the majority of jobs will be flat applications and or simple curves, so you'll want to associate a standard square footage cost for installation. However, some vehicles, like the Porsche here, are custom jobs and are priced at a flat rate. Okay, Troy, give me some specifics on what it takes to create something like this. Well, Joe, first of all, the printer that we use is a solvent-based inkjet as opposed to a UV curable or a water-based type machine. Right now, UV curable inks are still not perfected for vehicle applications. They are not as conformable because they tend to cure hard and this makes them really susceptible to cracking. Water-based inkjets simply don't have the durability and fade resistance needed for vehicle wraps. So really, solvent inks tend to work best for vehicle applications. We recommend using professional vinyls specifically designed for vehicle wraps. On the Porsche, we are using a high quality cast vinyl with a clear gloss vinyl over laminate. This particular combination gives us a five year warranty. The product also features air release technology, which aids in the application and prevents bubbles in the film. We strongly recommend laminating all printed vinyl that goes onto a vehicle with a vinyl over laminate as opposed to a liquid overlaminate. Vinyl overlaminates help protect against fading and abrasion. Again, better than liquid overlaminates. In addition, the overlaminate will give you more body for the install, which makes it easier to grip and conform around compound curves. So there are many materials to choose from, right? Right. As a printer, though, I need to determine two things. One is durability or duration, time that's going to be on the vehicle. Two is, is what type of surface? Is it a contoured surface like this Porsche or a flat surface like a box van? Once I've determined those materials, then I contact my local vinyl supplier. If I have any other questions, they'll be able to answer those for me. Okay, anything you look out for when printing? Nah, printing is the easy part. You probably have a lot of experience with your particular printer, so you know what it can and can't do. Just make sure you have enough ink and keep an eye out while printing to ensure that you have the best quality print. After printing, ideally you should let that vinyl outgas for 24 hours before laminating. This will prevent bubbling in the material. Now it's over to the plotter and we'll contour cut our graphics. Okay, once we've printed, laminated, and cut the materials, where do we go from there? Joe, as you know, no job can be done correctly without the proper tools. However, there's one tool we need to cover and that's a vehicle outline. Vehicle outline is the correct measurements for the designer, so when he designs the graphic, it fits the car. 
If it don't fit the car, we have a problem. Robbie is selecting the 2005 Ford F-250 pickup in the PVO catalog to get his corresponding number on the digital auto library software. Then he'll have the perfect measurement of the vehicle to start his design. On the Porsche, however, since it is a low production vehicle, there are no templates, so we had to custom measure in-house. Now let's take a look at the application tools. Having a high quality heat gun is big. There are professional heat guns available, such as this electric one. However, when you become proficient, you'll probably want to switch from a heat gun to a propane torch. The propane torch may make things a little easier for you in the future. The torpedo tool is a really cool tool to use when you're doing a trailer or a vehicle with a lot of rivets. This tool assists in pushing the air out behind the rivet. Now, there are other tools like the rivet brush for this task as well, and you'll see these in use during install. As for squeegees, I always recommend a felt line squeegee. This helps to avoid scratching or marring the vehicle surface and or the graphic. Your knives need to be sharp, so have extra blades. Otherwise, you can really mess up a print by getting a jagged cut. Alcohol, or in our case, IPA, is one of the best cleaners and prep solutions that we've found. It is also important to have it in a high quality spray bottle. Now, as far as marking of the vehicle, we use grease pencils and Stabilo pencils. These are important for the graphic and the marking of the vehicle. Now you're gonna want one of these. This is a Skinner chair. It's a real knee saver. It's even got a place below to keep your tools. Adhesive primer. This is used to promote adhesion. Most of the areas that we use this is in concave and convex surfaces. Additional areas that you might want to use this would include wheel wells, rocker panels, and areas that just see a lot of weathering. Tape measure for positioning. The air release tool. This is for removing air from bubbles that will occur during application. Here is a key area where you'll use this tool. Note, do not use the tip of your knife blade. Always use an air release tool. Masking tape for positioning and repositioning. Optional surface temperature thermometer and IR thermometer for checking surface and ambient temperature. Okay, we've gone through those steps, got our materials and our tools ready. What's the next step? Well, for a successful wrap, it better be squeaky clean. Okay, everyone, to make sure that we get the best possible adhesion, wash the vehicle thoroughly. If it's dirty, the vinyl will not stick to the surface. Now the Porsche has already been washed and now the Ape crew inspects the vehicle as they go over the entire car and hermetically clean all the surfaces that will come in contact with the graphics. In addition, we will always pay careful attention to the paint. Paint that is not fully cured can pull up from the vehicle during application, as well as it can outgas over time, which can cause the vinyl to lift. Either scenario can be a problem. Generally speaking though, most paints are cured after about 90 days, but if in doubt, check with the vehicle manufacturer and or a paint shop to be absolutely sure. In addition to that, any surface that may be old, oxidized, or like chalky paint will have a difficulty accepting vinyl as well. Areas that attract heavy dirt and fumes, such as rocker panels and the back of this car near the exhaust, need to be degreased with a solvent. You need to go over the entire install surface with alcohol to make sure that there is no oily residue from other solvents that may be left behind. Oh yeah, one more thing. Once your vehicle is clean, make sure it has time to completely dry and get to room temperature before beginning your install. The ideal temperature for an install should be between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now we got a clean vehicle. Are we ready to wrap that Porsche now? We're ready, let's get with it. This is where you'll use the masking tape to pin the graphic in place. You'll need to unroll the graphic and place it on the vehicle. Now the guys will check the graphic for alignment. Utilize horizontal body moldings like door tops and bottoms to get that alignment. Note, the floor is not a good surface to use for alignment. The vehicle's body has contours and beauty lines that are not level to the floor. Once positioned, you'll need a grease or Stabilo pencil and a tape measure. Use these tools to perfect the placement of the graphic. Remember, do not always rely on just measurement alone. Stand back and get an overall view and the look of the graphic and its placement on the car. 
Here, we have to contend with a mirror protruding, which complicates the positioning of the graphic. Here, the guys have relief cut that area so the graphic will not bunch up and will lay flat during the positioning and the install. Make certain that you know where to cut and how so you do not cut into the coverage area. Here's a couple specialty items to cover. In the case of the Porsche, for this video, we thought we'd show you what to do when the graphic is not pre-cut for a door handle. This taping of the door handle will help ensure when we cut the graphic away from this location, we do not cut the paint during the process. Now this takes practice and should only be attempted after you've proven success to yourself over and over again on sample panels. All right, here we go. It's time to start removing a portion of the backing. We have elected to remove just part of the backing to enable us to work with just the rear of the graphic alone and not having to deal with the initial tack of the entire piece. Now, when cutting, be very careful not to cut the graphic when trimming the backing away. With half the backing removed, tack the graphic back onto the car. Now you may have to position again and again, making sure that the graphic is hitting all the marks that you've made. Once the rear is in the proper position, repeat those same steps for the front of the graphic. Notice Rob is holding light tension on the media while Justin applies the squeegee to set the position of the graphic. On a graphic like this, always work from the center of the graphic out and move in either a vertical and or horizontal direction in overlapping strokes. Maintain the angle of the tool in conjunction to the surface at all times to ensure that you move all the air out from under the graphic. You should be leaving a smooth, conformed surface. Now, repositioning may be needed as peaks and valleys can arise during application. When squeegeeing, the material needs to be taut throughout the entire squeegee process, but not so much to stretch the material. Note the use of pre-mask for this area, this area where the graphic has been contour cut. Areas like this are susceptible to tearing when repositioning the graphic. We use a clear, pliable pre-mask for protection in these cases. When repositioning, it may be necessary to relief cut this area that is void of graphic to enable us to work with the contour of the vehicle. Note, do not cut all the way to the intersection you're trying to protect. Justin is protecting the applied intersection where the pre-mask was removed while Robbie positions the graphic for the fender over and over again to maintain the arc of the graphic, as well as hitting his location at the headlight. You are seeing one of the attributes of the media. It can be worked over and over again. There are many ways to take care of bubbles, and here are examples. First, as you can see, Rob has pulled the material up, releasing the area, and will re-squeegee the area down. Second, in many instances, small bubbles require just light pressure of your finger to move the air out. Back to the door handle. We have pre-taped it for cutting. Let's watch how the installer uses his finger to define the handle through the graphic marking the area to be cut and then cutting the handle area free. As noted on the screen, you will see that the graphic is anchored and in its final position forward of the door handle. This will ensure that the graphic will fall back into place after repositioning, as well as when removing the tape from behind the graphic. Here the installer is pulling the material back for repositioning and will squeegee the graphic to lay down in its final position. Now, from this point, they will install the balance of the side graphic and actually complete this side. When wrinkling occurs, softening the material with a heat gun or torch 
may be required to make that material more pliable, as well as when distortion is present from stretching. Patience in repositioning is required when working the wrinkles from the material. Okay, the side has been installed, and now Robbie will finalize the cutting of the door handle. He will now lift the graphic from the area and remove the tape. And finally, he will reapply the graphic into its final position. Now it's time to use the knife. Note the proper length of blade. It's short. So when Robbie relieves the fender graphic from the hood and in other small areas like doors, hatches, wheel wells, he does not cut the car's paint. Robbie is actually using the negative area of the seam as a guide to frame the blade holder, ensuring the blade does not come in contact with the paint. Some areas like here at the head 